John Bradburn's life began in Cumbria, England on the 14th of June, 1921. His life nearly ended during service to his nation in Malaya, but John survived the fall of Singapore so that he could give up his life during service to God instead. He was martyred on the 5th of September, 1979 in Rhodesia. Today we will explore Bradburn's rather unknown life and cause for canonization. He is certainly a candidate being considered by the church and unfortunately has yet to receive the title Servant of God. However, his life, especially his tragic death at the hand of what history considers liberators, clearly demonstrates that one day Bradburn will be recognized as a martyr and a saint. Before we can talk about Bradburn's life as a Catholic, we must look at him before his conversion. He entered the church in 1947, two years after the close of the Second World War. See, Bradburn had been a soldier during that era of death and destruction. He was with the 9th Gurkha Rifles of the Indian Army, stationed in British Malaya to help hold off the invading Japanese. The British were beat at Singapore. Winston Churchill considered the city's fall the worst disaster in British military history. 80,000 soldiers were taken prisoner by the Japanese alongside the 50,000 already captured before the surrender at Singapore. Bradburn was not among those 130,000. Instead, he fled to the jungle, staying there for a month with a few others. Now, one can only imagine the difficulties of surviving in such a harsh, foreign environment for so long, all while remaining undetected, hidden away from the enemy. It was clear they had to get away and back to the British Army proper, so Bradburn and another officer attempted to sail towards Sumatra in a sampan. Well, they shipwrecked, but that was no problem because they tried again. That second attempt got them rescued by the Royal Navy, and so Bradburn returned to India. While he was recommended for the military cross, he never received it. The rest of his service took place in Burma, with Brigadier Ord Wingate's Chindits. There, he again saw all that war had to offer. After the war, he felt compelled to serve God. A religious experience in Malaya is said to have sparked his conversion. This experience, which unfortunately I have been unable to find a detailed description of, through my initial research at least, led him to the Buckfast Abbey where he stayed with the Benedictines for some time. He wanted to become a monk, but he hadn't been in the church long enough, and at the same time, he felt the urge to pilgrimage, to travel. So for the next 16 years, John found himself wandering England, France, Italy, Greece, and the Middle East. In Palestine, for example, he joined an order devoted to the conversion of the Jews, the Order of Our Lady of Mount Sion. He stayed in Rome for a while, where he stayed in a small church playing the organ during Mass. He tried to be a hermit on Dartmoor. He was at the Prinknash Abbey for some time. He was a member of the Westminster Cathedral Choir as a sacristan as well. Cardinal Godfrey had John be the caretaker for his country house in Hertfordshire. He joined the Franciscan Order as a layman. He did a lot during these years, all while wandering. But it seemed that his wandering had brought him back to where he started, England. But in 1962, he wrote to a friend in Rhodesia, asking, is there a cave in Africa where I can pray? Invited to the country to help the missionaries, Bradburn told a Franciscan priest he had three goals, to help the victims of leprosy, to die a martyr, and to be buried in the habit of St. Francis. Well, he would achieve all three goals. After only a few years in Rhodesia, Bradburn was made the warden of the Mutamwa leprosy settlement in 1969. This position lasted until 1973, when he was removed from the position, officially for being careless with supplies and not keeping proper books. But this was minor. He kept serving the lepers at Mutamwa as he had been assigned chaplain by the local archbishop. This service continued until 1979, when he was abducted by Mugabe's guerrillas from the colony. He had refused to leave when the bush war intensified, specifically bringing the war closer and closer to the Mutamwa settlement. The insurgents took him prisoner on the 2nd of September. They were claiming that he was an informant. Now, unless the lepers were active participants in the revolutionary movements, it is unlikely John could have informed the Rhodesian security forces about anything. However, John was white, 
and the war in Rhodesia was particularly racially inflamed. While the security forces and supporters of Ian Smith's government were a mix of black and white Rhodesians, the revolutionary fighters and terrorists of Zanla and Zanu considered most whites their enemies. Missionaries were often in the crossfire, even when many missionaries were neutral or even naively supported their cause. Some of the revolutionaries saw Christianity as a tool of white oppression and control. It was the white man's religion, and for this reason, it could not be trusted. John was by no means an active participant in the Bush War or the politics of Rhodesia. He was spending his days in prayer. He was living as a hermit, and he was caring for lepers, for the weak and the diseased. That was all he was doing in the country. But again, that doesn't matter. To a bunch of armed thugs, taught from Mao's little red book, handed rifles and sent back into their homeland, a white cleric? Clearly this man must be aiding the security forces in some way, right? And they must have debated this and argued about this and interrogated Bradburn relentlessly, tortured him, because they didn't just kill John right there. They held him for three days and then just only suddenly, suddenly shot him while he was kneeling to pray on the 5th of September. He was executed because they only thought he was an informant. He was a white Christian, a lay monastic. Certainly he could not be trusted by the black liberators. His skin color and faith were foreign to their land, a land they had fled to be trained and armed as violent thugs, but John's murderers saw him as an invasive enemy, when in reality he had spent his many years in the country helping and caring for the weak and the diseased, the people who had nobody else to rely on, people who were shunned because of their condition. Leprosy is a horrible thing, and John wanted to devote what was left of his life to caring for these lepers at Mutemwa. And that devotion got him killed. Unfortunately, most sources that talk about John Bradburn try their best to dodge the topic of who killed him. One document written for the Vatican gives all the details about his death, except for which side killed him. We can blame this on the subversives in the church, many of which were supportive of Robert Mugabe and Joshua Nakoma. This naive support did not save men like John Bradburn from impromptu execution, torture, and imprisonment. It was a very poor choice, one derived from allegiance to politics before allegiance to faith. That is an entirely different topic, however, one to explore in detail later. Now that you have heard a brief summary of John Bradburn and his life, I think I can confidently assume you will agree with my assessment. John was a good man who devoted his life to God and to helping those in need. He died because he refused to leave those in need behind. He did not want to run away. He stood his ground and he kept working. He kept praying. He is worthy of canonization, but perhaps there is a reason he has yet to be canonized, that the process has yet to even begin. Just as those who work for his cause seem to prescribe his death to the crossfire of war and nothing more, Bradburn's full story may be forgotten just like so many other innocents who were slaughtered during the Bush War, buried or modified to not justify who history has cast as the bad guys. Despite Bradburn's efforts to just devote himself purely to the lepers and to prayer, in Rhodesia. Because the security forces did not kill him, and instead Mugabe's thugs did, for some reason the church is a lot more hesitant about recognizing him, about honoring a holy man who suffered a violent death for the faith for the work and the service he was doing in the name of Almighty God. Bradburn was buried in the habit of St. Francis just as he wished. And please pray for his canonization, though it may have to wait for a more agreeable Pope. If you are doubting my assumption that Bradburn's canonization is going slower because of who killed him, there is a religious sister, I forget her name, who also died in Rhodesia. 
She stopped at a checkpoint, thought that the soldiers were done checking over her car, and drove off, at which point they opened fire. And unfortunately, she could not be saved. She has been recognized by the church. The process of canonization has begun for her. Yet for Bradburn, it is yet to begin. The only difference between these two people, these two religious people who died in Rhodesia during the Bush War, is that she was killed in a traffic accident by the security forces, by history's bad guys, while Bradburn was executed by the liberators, by the soldiers of the internationally recognized government. Anyway, thank you for watching, and have a very good day.